Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our 35th webinar. I'm sure the 110 people in the room are thinking, what on earth is going on? Um, hopefully we'll be able to tell you what's going on, you'll figure it out, and there'll be nothing to worry about. So we have 135 people on the webinar so far. Um, you may have guessed, there is a theme to this webinar, it is about celebrations. Um, so come on in, get yourself comfortable. Um, say hello in the chat. Let's see if it's working. I can see that Dave is saying hi. How are you all? So tell us who you are, where you are in the world. Are you a social worker? Are you a social work student? Are you a practice educator? Are you in a related field? Let's get the chat going while we fill the room. Don't worry, we can't see you. Um, nobody's camera is on, nobody's mic is on, don't worry, just come in, get yourself comfortable and take part in the webinar. Um, you may have seen Siobhan is back, so it's going to be a very special webinar and um, we have 158 people, so it's filling up nicely. So welcome to our 35th webinar, the numbers have slowed down, I'm getting distracted looking what you've had for your tea, so I will stop doing that now um, and I think we'll pass over to Siobhan. So. Thanks very much, Kelly. Um, we've got we went international really early, but I can see we've got people joining us from Malawi and South Africa, um, all over the place. So, um, oh, good evening from Gibraltar. Pedro is from Gibraltar, third year student over there. So fabulous! Thank you for joining us from all over the world for our celebratory webinar. Um, I'm partly celebrating just the fact that I'm back to the webinars, um, out of hospital and recovering. So that's all great. So that's partly my celebration. Um, but actually tonight we're going to look at uh, a framework for why we celebrate social work. You might recognise that that um, front slide there is a bit of a ripoff from the celebrations chocolates that it looks like the whole team have got a packet of celebrations chocolates behind them we did ask you on social media to get your celebrations ready for later on um, so we're going to have a look at celebrating social work perhaps through the medium of chocolate there's always a good excuse to have chocolates and uh, you know we're coming up towards easter so why not um but everybody seems to be celebrating social work at the moment. We know that we've got World Social Work Day next week. So we've got World Social Work Day on Tuesday next week. So our webinar next week is all about international social work to celebrate World Social Work Day. But um, in, uh, I think in America for quite a long time, they've extended World Social Work Day, which is always on the third Tuesday of March every year. They've extended it to World Social Work Month in America and BASWA have done that I think for the first time this year so British Association of Social Workers have a month to celebrate social work and this week it's Social Work England doing a celebration of social work all week so loads of people are celebrating social work there seems to be so many webinars on this week because of what social work england are doing there's just stuff going on all the time diana did one earlier with omar about student activism so we know that there's stuff going on all of the time at the moment looking at celebrating social work but um, this is, I don't know if you've seen this, because Social Work England are doing their celebration of social work, they asked for posters that um, showed innovative social work practice. And Kelly does the posters for our webinars every week. So Kelly um, volunteered to put a poster together for us about um, the Student Connect team and what we've been doing. And that's what you can see up in front of you is a celebration of the webinars that we've done. You can see that we wrote this when we'd done 30 webinars because we had to submit it quite a while ago but it was selected and it is up on the Social Work England website so um, I suppose partly we tonight are celebrating that that our poster was chosen thank you very much to Kelly for putting that together and sending it I think it looks amazing so we wanted to share that with you tonight so tonight is all about celebrations and it's a kind of back to basics webinar you know sometimes I like to do those back to basics about theory and reflection well tonight is about celebration but it's a back to the basics of celebrating social work so I want us to look at that really basic framework that I use for everything of what why and how so what is celebration all about why should we celebrate social work and how should we do it just to look at that what why and how framework of um, celebrating social work. So to start off with, 
and I looked at well what's a what what does celebrate mean what does it mean to celebrate and I know I think Becky asked that on our social media um earlier this week and people put up some examples of what they think celebration is all about I started with the dictionary definition and the dictionary definition is that to celebrate is an action of honoring or marking a certain day so I suppose that's world social work day for us it could be about a social gathering well we can't do that at the moment because we're all socially um at distance so there's no social gathering but we can have an enjoyable activity tonight so we can do that now that's the dictionary definition that's the definition that you find in words but you'll know if you're a regular attender of our webinars that i am very much a picture-based thinker so when i'm looking at defining something i don't just look at a dictionary definition i also look at a google image search so i did a google image search on celebration just to see what came up and of course what comes up is celebrations chocolates so we thought we'd start the night with the celebrations chocolate I've been asking the team all week, what's your favourite? And um, Becky actually put this together as her favourite, like top to bottom. So um, I think Becky's favourite is the Galaxy and it goes all the way down to clearly the Bounty and the Snickers and was even at the bottom there. So what's your favourite? Put it in the chat. What is your favourite celebration chocolate? Because what we're about to do is look at what each of those celebration chocolates might mean in terms of social work. So when I talked to somebody about doing this, they said, oh, is it like a Myers-Briggs test? You know, whichever one you choose, it's kind of gives you your personality or something. It doesn't, it's entirely up to you. Which is your favorite chocolate? Which is the one that's always left? If you get a tub like Chris has got, which is the one that the family never eat at Christmas time? Which one gets left over? Clearly for Chris, it's the bounties. That's all she's got left in her tub. So which chocolates is it that you like the most? That's what we kind of want you to do. I did wonder whether we should do a poll on this, but I, I think it could cause a complete argument. I don't know if any of you have ever followed the social workers biscuit chat and the social workers crisps chat on Twitter. When it starts, it goes daft. People saying which is the best biscuit, which is the best packet of crisps. If ever, it, it, it just comes round every now and again. So I thought I don't want to start off an argument about chocolates. So we're not doing a poll but which one is your favourite? And we're going to work through them. And some of the team members have chosen a chocolate that to them links in some way to social work or to study in social work or to just so that we can have a look at a full tin of celebrations. So I think what we're starting with is the bounty. Chris has got the bounties all left, but David, actually Dave chose the bounty to talk about. So Dave, what's your call on the bounty chocolate and its link with social work? So first off, it's totally underrated, just like all of us. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> um, my rationing, I'm going to read it because I couldn't memorise it. Uh, my thinking for the bounty is uh, stuck in a box and trying to find its place in a collection of chocolates that are openly liked and praised. Lots of people dislike the bounty, but when they do like it, those people love it. It is their source of excitement and they look forward to a bounty much like social workers. We won't always be liked by everyone we work with, professionals or clients, but there will absolutely be those people we impact upon and leave a lasting impression. And we will persevere even in an environment where others are more popular than us because it's our job to be that source of support and um, hopefully a source of joy, so. I love that. It's great that, Dave. Thanks for that. You see, we're looking into depth now. So every time you eat a chocolate now, you have to think about his link to social work. It's going <laughs> to uh, it's going to get in your brain tonight. Um, but I was thinking about bounty. If you did a dictionary definition of bounty, it's payment, isn't it? And we don't come into this job for payment, do we? So that's how we don't link into the bounty, because uh, there's certainly not a lot of bounty in social work in terms of payment. Um, so let's go through the other chocolates then. What about a Twix? So I don't know what's going on in the chat. I'm hoping that you're putting down what your favourite chocolate is, but maybe how does a Twix, how on earth does a Twix relate into social work? So what I did for the chocolates that the team didn't choose was I just did a bit of a digging around, like what's the advert for this chocolate or what might it mean or something? So in terms of the Twix, 
the advert is all about whether you go for a left Twix or a right Twix. And it's all about like making big decisions. Well, social work is all about big decisions, isn't it? But they make this big play on the advert about how it's very different, um, you know, but no two days are the same in social work. So I think the Twix, the left and the right are identical, aren't they? But you never get two days the same in social work. We are a bit betwixt and between things. We're always kind of getting stuck in with the messy stuff. We're always in the middle of things. We're always in the midst of it. And sometimes I think contemporary social work can feel like you're working in a factory with little space for creativity or individual difference. It can feel a little bit like we're churning stuff out. So a bit like that advert of the factory. And I also wondered about the two bars. It kind of, if you put the two bars together, just visualize what the two bar of the Twix looks like. It's a bit like a pause button. And the importance of sometimes us needing to pause to stop and think about what we do as social workers and sitting down and having that Twix gives you that moment of pausing just to think about what it is that we do as social workers. So that's your Twix, if Twix is your favourite. See if you can get involved in the game now. See if you can get what each chocolate might mean to you in terms of social work and bunga in the chat. What we're going to do now is take a look at Snickers. And for Snickers, we've got Nicola. So Nicola's choice was Snickers. Have you got your mic on, Nicola? I do, I do now. So uh, for me, Snickers really is a reflection of the journey I had into social work. Like I was telling you guys earlier, um, I thought about leaving what I thought was, it, well, first of all, it was a marathon similar to what it was like before 1990 and then changed over to the name in England um, to Snickers. But my original decision to, to leave my wonderful job and decide to do social work is like a whole mix of the diverse, uh, diverse Snickers. Um, and I remember speaking to my friends and I said, you know, I'm going to do this. What do you think? And one of my best friends of 33 years was like, just do it. And then within a week of uh, starting my step up to social work training, he suddenly passed away with a massive heart attack. Um, and so stickers really does almost reflect my journey. There were so many emotions. There was trying to compartmentalize the emotions of the families, my emotions, myself, and then the emotions because it was during the time of um, the whole Black Lives Matter movement and knowing that my son's in America. And so it was, there was so much mix, but I think that really has shaped the practitioner that I'm going to be. And it, it sort of set boundaries for how I'm going to practice and how I'll manage and acknowledge and really stay with my emotions and separate what's related to what. So Snickers for me doesn't only taste good. It's a little bit nutty as well, like me. So Snickers doesn't, <laughs> doesn't just taste good, but it's really as, as diverse as my experience, as diverse as my experience into social work and just as d diverse as what I think I'm going into when I'm working with my wonderful uh, cherubs, misunderstood cherubs, which will be adolescents. So I'm excited about snickering myself all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Nicola thank you and uh, we're celebrating with you as a team aren't we the completion of your placement and you getting that job that dream job of working with adolescents so you're just about to become on that next part of your journey I think sometimes as well and we've talked about this as a team haven't we that fact that Snickers used to be called a marathon, although some people don't even remember that because it's, it's such a long time ago now, isn't it? 32 years since it changed its name. I mean, that's amazing. Well, maybe I wasn't born then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never even knew, did you? It used to be called a marathon. Just me oh, talking. Right. Um, but, um, you know, we've talked about the fact that sometimes people think you get to the point of qualifying and it's kind of like, oh, I've done the marathon. It's You know, I can put that's that sort of blanket over me and everything but it's nice it's the first step of the marathon really isn't it it's it's the next part of the race so it definitely feels like a relay <laughs> yeah it definitely is so thanks for that Nicola and sharing with well, us um, the idea of Snickers and then we're going to go on to the Milky Way now Di 
isn't with us tonight as a panelist she's in the audience tonight now Di might type into the chat why she was going to talk about a milky way but what we're celebrating for Di is that today she's been uh, she's been approved as a um an adopter for a dog and she's got her her new dog today she's not had a dog for many years so she's not come in tonight as a panelist in case she's got to run outside with the dog um but she might tell you in the chat what uh, a milky way means to her and why she would have chosen a milky way from my perspective what i was thinking about the milky way was it's got stars on hasn't it it's all about stars but actually the advert says the magic is in the Milky Way. And I think the thing about social work is that sometimes we do make magic. You are all stars when you come into social work, I think. And there's that bit about that kind of magic in the Milky Way, the bit about being a bit outside of the universe, the Milky Way, all of that. Um, so for me, that was what the Milky Way means um, in terms of the relationship with social work but Di had so much more so Di will be here I know and she'll type it all into the chat in terms of the galaxy we are going to go to Ngozi who chose the galaxy you need to put your microphone on Ngozi before you tell us all about it and you go ahead then with your choice you hear that sound the galaxy we can <laughs> and that it's my galaxy hot chocolate drink. I love galaxy and um, it's one of the chocolates in the celebration box. I didn't quite know it was there when I was told to talk about galaxy. I didn't realize that even though I have loads of empty boxes of celebrations <laughs> and my full celebration box tonight, that galaxy is there, but something struck me when I asked my daughter, what do you know about galaxy? She's, she's like, mom, is it the galaxy as in the galaxies? I said, yes. Well, she said, I can't name all of them offhand, but I know that galaxy is the Milky Way in the stars and I've got my star top on because I'm talking about galaxy. The thing about celebration boxes, as you can see, I've got empty boxes. The first one was on my husband's birthday in November last year. The second one was for Christmas, family, husband, adult. And then the third one was for my daughter's birthday last month, children. Okay, so, when these um, celebration boxes are bought, please go to take them because I'm actually not a fan of like chocolates when it's there, but I do know the one that I will pick. And then when I go, it's empty. And I'm like, oh, how come everyone forgot all about me and ate up all of the chocolates? That is how social workers, we hardly notice they are there. But when you come in contact with social workers, you will know that there is value that they give to children, to families, to adults. And to me, the way I value my galaxy is the way I think social workers should be valued because we're celebrating Social Work Week so why not celebrate good times? Come on. <laughs> the added singing in there and goes, it was brilliant. So thank you for that. Oh, I love the idea that everybody eats all the chocolates though and you don't get to have the one that you want. But Galaxy, isn't the advert for Galaxy all about why have cotton when you can have silk? That thing all about, you know, social work is, um, I think, undervalued, as lots of us have said tonight. We've so many of us have said that, haven't we, in terms of the chocolates. As well as the ordinary galaxy in celebrations, you do also get a galaxy caramel. And so I was thinking about, it kind of builds on, I suppose, a bit from what Ngozi said, but the galaxy caramel, it's always about, they kind of do the adverts as about a sensual experience, don't they? And I think for me, 
social work is all about the use of our senses we draw on our senses in social work we draw on what we can see we draw on what we can hear we draw on what we can smell what we can touch what we can feel there's so much about the use of senses in social work even about our gut instinct it's all about the use of senses and I think that's why working virtually some of us have struggled a bit more with that because we lose some of that ability to smell environments to kind of feel get the feel of an environment and an atmosphere we're losing the use of some of our senses in terms of virtual working the other thing about a, a caramel though is it's hard on the outside isn't it it gets hard to start with but then when you get through it it's kind of soft and easy and really enjoyable and i think that's a bit like social work sometimes it's really hard to kind of get through and work with people or it's really hard to become a social worker but actually once we get there it's really worth it it's all that real joy of the um content of the galaxy caramel and then we've got a Mars bar, and I think this one is Kulchuma's choice. So Kulchuma, are you going to stick your mic on? I don't know if you can follow up with any singing, Kulchuma, actually. Yeah, but if you yeah. want to tell us <laughs> why, why you chose a Mars bar. Um, well, I can't. I've got very big boots to fill now after Ngozi. Uh, but I'll give it a go, but there's no singing. No singing. Um, so for me, with Mars... Um, it relates to both to social work through the learning journey as well as practice. So for students, it's an alien territory. They've got a lot to explore and learn. Um, and whereas for practitioners, so for social workers that are, in, are actually practicing, for them, it's the individuals that they're supporting. And that's how I see the Mars bar, like the people you are supporting, you've got to build that relationship with them in order for them to reveal their various different layers that they've got just like the mars bar so the chocolate outer layer is what everybody sees it's you know their um the brick wall if you want to say that they've built up to it in order to protect themselves um and then from that you've got your caramel which um, like Siobhan said is like the messy stuff or the sticky situations that they've got themselves into that we are supporting them to get out of and then for after that you've got the nougat which is like the feelings and I've re I'm relating that to feelings because for feelings for me is like the soft squishy moments that you get and that is the texture of what a nougat is so for me uh, a Mars bar is the way that Obviously, we've got to build the relationships with the individuals um, and, you know, help them to overcome all the messy stuff that they're stuck in or get help them to come out from the sticky situations. And then, you know, we can help to celebrate their every little success with them um, as well. So that's how I have viewed the Mars bar in relation to social work. I love that. I think that was brilliant, Kulchuma. I really liked that. Do you know, you're too young as well to remember this advert, but when I was a kid, they used to have an advert. I think they banned it because it's um, it's not absolutely true. But uh, what I always remember is the advert was a Mars a day helps you work, rest and play. I don't know if other people remember that, but um, I suppose for me, it's always about self-care, you know, because it's that work, rest and play. It's about getting the balance in social work and getting that self-care in as well. So I was thinking about that from a Mars bar, but yours is a really different perspective and really interesting. I love thinking about the layers. So thank you for that. And then the, well, ordinarily the final chocolate, in a box of um, celebrations is the teasers, the Maltesers, those little like kind of bits of Maltesers in the chocolate. And thinking about this one, I was thinking, well, if you think about the adverts for Maltesers, the adverts specifically seek to address issues of diversity, particularly in terms of disability. If you think about the adverts, there's lots of diversity in the adverts, but I think that kind of values and ethics part of, um, of the Malteser really is important and helpful for us to think about. Um, the Maltesers, in some of the research that I've done about um, the celebrations, the Maltesers are described as the best of the best. 
best. Now, I don't know if that's what you think, but that's how they're described. And I think that's what social work can be. They're also described as li little pockets of goodness and are undervalued. Now, all of us have talked about things being undervalued in social work, and we've not really talked in detail about what the chocolates are going to mean to us in terms of social work. And yet that's interesting, isn't it, that we are often undervalued or devalued. So specifically, purely for research purposes, I have a, a packet of celebrations, but these are Easter ones and they've thrown in some extras. They've thrown in an Easter rabbit, which I think is a Malteser rabbit. And then I was thinking, oh, we're going to have to add that in. But we haven't. But I was thinking about what might a rabbit be? A rabbit might represent, I think in webinar one, when we talked about theory, we talked about how sometimes when you're asked a question in supervision, a student might look like a terrified rabbit caught in the headlights. So maybe that's where the rabbit might come in. But we've generally just been looking at what you ordinarily get in celebrations as a bit of fun. Put in the chat what your thoughts are. You might have some better ideas about what the chocolates might mean or what your favourite chocolate is. But what we're trying to show is, look, you can link in anything to social work. So we've looked at what we mean by celebrate and celebrations, both looking at chocolates and at the dictionary definition. But why should we celebrate? Why should we celebrate what we're doing, especially at the moment? I do think that there are lots of people asking questions about World Social Work Day and is this the right time to celebrate social work? We're in a, you know, the middle of a global pandemic and a major crisis and people are experiencing such significant loss and disadvantage. Is it the right time for us to be celebrating? But actually, you know, celebrations help us to release stress. They can promote motivation. It links into good leadership. Um, it helps us to formulate a vision of what social work means to us, what social work looks like to us. We can recognise excellence, recognise innovation, and we can learn from that. It can demonstrate a appreciation and acceptance, which is important in social work. It can bring people together. It can build an energy. It can give an energy. It can promote optimism and hopefulness, which are vital in social work. Celebrating together boosts health and well-being, and that's really important for us as social workers. It shows values. It's a key aspect of having a positive organisational culture. It's good for team building. It's good for morale. And we know as well that it will help to address moral injury, which we've talked about a lot in these webinars, but is going to be impacting on social workers, um, I think, for some time, even beyond the pandemic. And we know that celebrating because one of the things that mitigates the impact of moral injury is feeling like you're part of a team feeling that you're working together and feeling valued. So celebration does matter. Maybe we need to celebrate more as social workers because we are so devalued by society and maybe that's a specific reason. Harry Ferguson, who is a very good friend of the webinars and has been to two of our webinars um, so far, he said a couple of years ago now, he said social work operates in a deficit culture an affirmative culture that accounts for all the good that social workers do is needed to change this. Whilst austerity and cuts in staffing levels and support services make it hard for social workers to do what they know to be the best, such harsh realities only make the achievements of inspirational social workers all the more remarkable. What we're doing at the moment, working through global pandemic, working in really difficult, challenging situations, is inspiring, is innovative, is creative and should be celebrated. The danger, and I do agree there, that very often we do work in a deficit culture. We're encouraged in our reflection to think about what didn't work. And we're often very self-critical and we need to celebrate at times because of that. So I completely agree with what Harry Ferguson says here. The danger, though, is if we link it back to chocolates. The danger is that you can get sucked into the opposite of um the celebrations chocolates, the heroes, you can actually end up being sucked into a social worker as a superhero narrative. And I think it's really important that we don't promote ourselves as superheroes. So it's about how do we get the balance 
of celebrating without saying, look how fabulous we are. Look, we are heroes. I think it's really important to move away from a superhero narrative. It's dangerous. I think, you know, one thing is superheroes kind of, well, they don't need anything, do they? Superman goes into a telephone box, twirls round, and he has everything he needs. And it's almost like Theresa May described social workers. As, so if you're not from the UK, Theresa May's a previous prime minister and she in, in the UK, and she described social workers as heroes, unsung heroes. And I think it's terrible when politicians describe us as heroes, because that's almost like saying, well, that, you know, they do the job because they're heroes. They don't need recompense they don't need recognition they don't they don't need any sit because they can just twirl around in a telephone box and come out with everything they need that's a danger another danger of a superhero narrative is it's saying that we rescue people people don't need to be rescued we don't rescue people think about Kultuma's Mars bar and what that Mars bar is and how we should enable people to celebrate their own achievements so I think it's really important that we don't slip into a superhero narrative. The best social work comes from a position of curiosity, of humility and self-awareness, not heroism. Our role isn't about rescuing people. It's about working with, for and alongside of people. And it's not about superpowers. Rather, it's about power sensitive practice. That's what social work is all about. So what we're going to do next, I want to make sure that we never use the word hero because superhero is really important. So let's not use the word hero in terms of social work, but let's just build a little bit, starting to think about how should we celebrate social work? How do we celebrate social work without being some kind of superhero, without slipping into that dangerous superhero narrative? Now, we know as social workers, that in terms of promoting identity of the people that we seek to support, we use a whole range of techniques to support identity and, and to ensure a person-centred approach. We're not as good at doing that for ourselves as social workers. Often we're not very good at explaining our own identity, at talking about what it is that we do. We're not terribly good at that. What we are really good at is using things like narrative and biographical approaches. So using life story or uh, reminiscence type work. We're good at looking at people's history and their roots. We're good at looking at groups that people belong to. What groups do people belong to? And we're good at challenging labeling and stereotypes. We're really good at doing that for the people that we work with. What I think we're not very good at is doing those things for ourselves. So we're going to test this out now with a bit of a poll. I'm going to just take, uh, we've got two polls coming up quickly. Now they'll be very quick. So I want you to answer them as quickly as you can. It's just a yes or a no. Can you name a famous nurse? That's your first question. So we've got, look, I'm seeing here we've got 79 people have voted. I know not everybody, it depends what device you're watching on, not everyone can access the poll. So if you can't access the poll, I'm reading it out for you and telling you what it says. It says, can you name a famous nurse? Yes or no. And we've got 65% of people have, um, have voted, 68% is going up a little bit all of the time. And so far we're on 78% of you can name a famous nurse. 22% of you can't name a famous nurse. So we'll stop the poll at that point. And um, I'm just, I don't wanna put anybody on the spot with this here, but just to say to you, I think it still is, um, part of the national curriculum in England at least for children. So children, by the age of nine, have got to be able to name a famous nurse. And by the age of 14, have got to be able to tell the story of one. That was what used to be on the national curriculum. If you look at the history GCSE in the UK, it's all about the history of medicine. Nurses are really good at promoting themselves. They do it really effectively. I think the whole NHS, it's really good at kind of their 
good at promoting their own identity and what they do and who they are and all of that I think is really positive. So I'm going to ask you in the chat to put who your famous nurse is, because what was it? Nearly 80% of you could name a famous nurse. So who is your famous nurse? Now, I can't see the chat while I'm sharing my slides. So Diana was going to have a look in the chat and tell me who have we got Diana as a famous nurse so far? We have quite a few people saying um, Florence Nightingale. Um, and when, once they said it, I absolutely was like oh I know that person um someone said Mary Seacole mm -hmm. um who else someone said Edith Cavill Edith Cavell yeah sorry mm -hmm. um Pamela Hibbs Hib oh don't know that one I don't know that one either but a lot of people are saying Florence 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 Mary yeah Hibbs, yeah I think Florence Nightingale is the one that often they teach in schools and Mary Seacole now increasingly being taught in schools. Um, again, about decolonizing the whole idea of the stories of Florence Nightingale. Um, so now nobody has named some of the other famous nurses. So you've all named kind of positive stories. And in fact, a lot of local areas have their own famous nurse. You know, I live near a, the streets called Sister Dora Road because Sister Dora was famous around here. So lots of local areas have their own famous nurse. They're celebrated very often. So famous nurse, big thing, loads of, you know, go and ask anybody in the general public, can you name a famous nurse? And most people in the general public would be able to name a famous nurse. Now, our second question for our second poll, and again, when you've answered it, I want you to put your answer into the chat and Diana's going to be keeping an eye on it. So, can you name a famous social worker? Now we've got, let's see, 20% uh, of you have voted so far. And it's more about, it's more, ne it's almost neck and neck. It's kind of 50 50 here. So it's getting quite exciting. I can see Kelly's even sitting forward, getting excited by this. Look, 49% of you can, 52% now, because it's changing all of the time, can't. Now, this is very much more split, isn't it? I think we've got an audience of social workers. Do you not think if we look at this, it's quite sad that we can all name a famous social worker, a fa sorry, a famous nurse, and yet not a famous social worker? And we're a group of social workers and we can't do that. Go and ask someone in the general public, can you name a famous social worker? And there's not a chance that you're going to get an answer to that. It's a really different situation. So look at that, mm -hmm. almost a complete split. 49% of you can name a famous social worker and 51% of you can't. And yet we're a group of social workers. So Diana, tell me who is in the chat as the famous social worker? Well, the most famous social worker in the chat right now is you, Siobhan. Um, <laughs> don't choke. <laughs> Give me a joke then. <laughs> yeah, it is you, which I completely agree with. Um, some people have said Brene, um, Brene Brown. Um, mm -hmm. um, some people have said Harry Ferguson. Um, some people have said Paul O'Grady. Yeah, Paul um, O'Grady yeah. used to be a social worker. Yeah. Okay. Some people have said Neil Thomas. Um, Professor Chlorine from Trinity Dublin. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Her. I don't know her. Um, Mrs. Markle. So I'm guessing that's <laughs> Meghan Markle's <laughs> um, mom. Someone said Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, he used to be a social worker too. I didn't know that. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Um, Mother Teresa. Someone said. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Lena Dominelli and Judy Love, Wayne Reed, a lot of people are saying Wayne Reed, mm -hmm. um, Jane Adams, yeah, and um, Prosper Tedham, uh, and Joe Brand, yeah, those are the main ones that I'm yeah. seeing. Yeah, Jo Brand actually wasn't a social worker. Her mum was a social worker. Oh. Jo Brand was a psychiatric nurse, 
But, you know, we, we, we've got quite a few there. You're right. Samuel L. Jackson, that one often surprises people. Barack Obama actually started training as a social worker, although he changed over. Um, so um, I think I wondered whether people were going to talk about Joe Biden's daughter being quite now quite famously a social worker. But I'd say all of that list, I'd say, firstly, I'd say I don't count. And I think if you think about all of that list, most of those people are well known for teaching social work or researching social work or writing about social work, not doing it. And I think that's really interesting. And social workers aren't about promoting themselves. We're not about trying to make ourselves famous. And I think that's why this is. But it does make me sad sometimes that a group of social workers can't name a famous social worker. So in the second part of the webinar, and partly linked into the fact that it's also been International Women's Day, as we know. I'm going to tell you the story of a social worker, a social worker who currently holds the title of the world's most distinguished social worker. So if you're as old as me and you can remember Jack and Ori, I would say uh, sit back, make yourself comfortable. And I'm going to tell you the story of Irina Sendler. Irina Sendler was a social worker in Poland. She was born in 1910. She died in 2008. She was born about 15 miles outside of Warsaw in Poland. The, when I say uh, Irina Sendler, it's really an Americanized name, uh, version of her name. So it was Irina Sendler Rover, um, her full name. Um, she, her father, who died when she was quite young, but her father was uh, one of the first Polish socialists. He was um, a GP and he treated people for free and in, uh, he opened up a free clinic for people who were living um, without recourse to public funds. And she grew up within that. And she says it was from her father that she learnt a sense of social justice and the importance of human rights. And it, she says that's what got her interested initially in social work. Now, she was born into a Catholic Polish family. And the reason that I'm telling you that is because there's a lot of misinformation about Irina. And I'm going to try and give you some real factual information so that you can make sure that you're picking up the right kind of information and that you go into an accurate source. Irina knew uh, around 17, she said, you know, I want I want to be a social worker. Um, it was 1927, though, and there were no social work courses in Poland at that time. I think the closest one to her at that time was in Paris. She didn't want to leave Poland. So she started off studying law at the University of Warsaw because she thought she could do something around human rights. But then she changed over to a humanities course to do Polish studies involving social pedagogy. And she moved into social work from that. She went on to be what we would call a newly qualified social worker at a mother and child aid section in um, Warsaw. And that's the background to her story. Now, you will know from your history lessons that Germany invaded Poland in 1939 and that that was the start of the Second World War. Now, by this time, Irina was working for the Social Welfare Department in Warsaw and she'd worked her way up and she was a kind of, well, she was a supervisor within the team. The Nazis herded hundreds and thousands of Jewish people into the Warsaw Ghetto. And we know that within the ghetto, disease, squalor, starvation were commonplace. People were dying at an alarming rate within the ghetto. Irina saw a number of the service users that she and her colleagues worked with forced into the ghetto. She also saw some of her colleagues forced into the ghetto. And um, to start with, there were lots of concerns about what could she do? What could social workers do? And very quickly, the Nazis banned social workers from going into the ghetto because they said they saw social workers as potentially political adjutants who would try to change what was happening. Um, and so they banned social workers from going into the ghetto, but they allowed nurses to continue 
to go into the ghetto. So the picture that you see there is Irina dressed as a nurse. Now it's really important to know she was a social worker. She was never a nurse. There's books like there's a book called 101 Most Inspirational Women of All Time. And it, it's got that photo of Irina and it tells her story, but it says she was a nurse and she wasn't a nurse. They've got enough of their own famous. We need to hold on to our own as social workers. She was a social worker, but she passed herself off as a nurse. She got a pass from the epidemic control department, her and about seven of her colleagues, um, so that they could continue to go into the ghetto because the Nazis were allowing nurses to still go in. So she dressed as a nurse. She was initially taking in food and medicine and clothes into the people that were locked into the ghetto. But she knew and she heard stories about what she thought might happen um, to people. She heard stories of the concentration camps and what was going to happen. And she recognised, she focused, she was a children and families social worker and she was very child centred. So she focused on children. She recognised the peril that children were in. And so she persuaded reluctant parents to give up their children to her so that she could get the children out of the ghetto to keep them safe. She found Polish families who were willing to take in those children and raise them as their own to pass them off as Catholic children to keep them safe outside of the ghetto. Now I think it says something about Irina's powers of persuasion that she says no one ever refused to do this when she asked them. And yet it was punishable by death to help a Jewish person at that time. Ultimately, Irina smuggled two and a half thousand children out of the Warsaw Ghetto and kept them safe throughout that time. She worked with the Zagota resistance movement, which was part of the Polish underground movement. And they smuggled, she was, it wasn't just her, it was her and a number of her colleagues and other people working within the Zagota movement. And they smuggled children out in all kinds of ways. A lot came out in body bags, unfortunately. Some, um, there's even a story of her bringing out a newborn baby in a mechanic's toolbox. Older children tended to go out through the sewers. So I have seen posts on social media that say that Irina Sendler was a sewerage worker. She was a social worker. The key thing that shows that Irina was a social worker is what she did was amazing. Getting children out of the ghetto, keeping them safe was amazing. But what was really amazing was what she did as a social worker and her recognition of the vital importance of identity, which is why I'm using this to talk about our identity as social workers. She noted down their original names and their new identities and kept it in code form in a jar. She had loads of jars that she kept all of this information in. She wouldn't allow, she wouldn't place siblings together because she thought they might give each other away by speaking to each other in Hebrew. So children were placed in lots of different places. And she wrote down in this, this coded form where she'd placed children's siblings and so on. She maintained their identities and kept the identities of those children safe. She put all of that information in jars and she buried the jars beneath a tree near to where she lived so that she could keep that information and give it back to the children when they were older after the war. It's essentially the birth of life story work. This is a passage taken from her memoirs, which are written for her. Um, I find it chokes me too much when I say it, but um, so I'm gonna leave you to read it, I think. Um, she says how, the emotional context of social work has to be recognised and social workers must be supported with that emotional challenge of work. And she recognised the emotional challenge of working in the situation that she worked in. Irina paid a very significant price. In 1943, she was arrested by the Gestapo. She was tortured really severely. They were trying to get her to give up information about her colleagues, about who'd helped her, about the children and where the children were. She was taken to um, 
a police station effectively and kept by the Gestapo for a while and tortured and she never gave out any information and in her memoirs she says that every morning the Gestapo would come and read a list of names and those people would go and you would never see them again and she said you knew they were taken off to be killed and one morning her name was on the list the first thing that came to her mind was who will give the children back their identities she wasn't thinking of herself she was thinking of the children the Zagota managed to bribe the guards um, so that they didn't execute her on the firing line. They beat her and they left her in the woods unconscious with um, broken bones. And because of that and the treatment that she received during that time, she had mobility problems for the rest of her life, really. So she paid a very significant price. But they kept her safe until after the war. And after the war, she was able to dig up the jars and give children back their identities. Most of the children um, in a book that I've been reading recently that I'll tell you about in a little while, most of the children, uh, more than 80 percent of those children lost their family in the concentration camps. But she was able to give children back their identities. She was able to tell them that they had been loved and where they had come from. She was able to tell them about their siblings and give them back their identity for some of those children it took years to find them you know just tracking people down because they'd moved a lot during the war and crisis and so on so it was for many years that people were coming forward and saying I recognize you you were Jalanta which was the code name that was used so there are many stories of her finding children and giving them back their identity as adults she received lots of awards. She was actually nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, um, but didn't get it. And uh, at that time, the International Federation of Social Workers named her the world's most distinguished social worker. She was widely recognized. Her story became widely known through the Life in a Jar project. And if you're interested and you wanted to look it up, just look at Life in a Jar. It's all about the story of keeping children's lives in the jar. It was a, a project which started in America and um, four students put together a play. And the play has shown basically all over the world. The websites had millions of visitors and um, at first, when these students, they'd done it as part of a National History Month or something, and when these students um, developed the play about Irina, they assumed that she died. But then they found that she hadn't. They eventually met. Um, Irina was fascinated by the project and by the play. The key thing that Irina always said, though, was this wasn't about me. This wasn't me as an individual. This was our profession. And this is what social work does. Social work has values and ethics that they use in times of crisis. And that's where we are now. We're in a global crisis. And as social workers, we're using our values and ethics. And we're standing on the shoulders of giants like Irina Sendler. I think every social worker should know the story of Irina Sendler. And if you don't know the story and you haven't heard it, I have noticed whilst I've been off poorly and recovering that um, the film called The Courageous Heart of Irina Sendler was available on Amazon Prime TV um, for free. You can get it easily, I think, from Netflix and so on as well. So it's a really good film. It's put together very well. It's very clear about her social work and how she became a social worker. It's a, it's a really interesting film to watch. Irina died in 2008. Part of a lovely aspect of the story is that towards the end of her life, she was cared for in the nursing home by one of the children that she'd smuggled out of the ghetto. She had three children, um, uh, two, uh, two sons, both of whom had died and uh, before she did, and a daughter. She said, um, Irina said, I was taught that you, if you can see a person drowning, you must jump into the water to save them whether or not you can swim. Now, I'm not advocating that and I'm not necessarily saying that's what we should do. But Irina Sendler's story is inspirational. There are lots of books about her and some of them are really 
Some of them are not very accurate, I think, and certainly don't talk about her as a social worker. But um, whilst I've been poorly, I um, read this book, which is the most recent book written about Irina's story. It's from 2016, and it's a really interesting read. And it goes a lot into how she developed as a social worker. It goes into the complexities of her life, and it certainly does not um present Irina as any kind of hero it talks about the children and it talks about Irina's involvement in that but the complexity and layers of her life as a social worker and it's a, again a really interesting read so on um as we're celebrating social work and we're also looking at International Women's Day I wanted to bring to you the story of an inspirational social worker we do stand on the shoulders of giants. There are many inspirational social workers. We could have chosen to share the story of Margaret Humphreys. Again, a film about her oranges and sunshine. And she's also doing a Basra event, I've noticed, I think next week, um, that people will be able to book onto if you're a Basra member. And her story, again, is a fascinating story. But I chose to share with you Irina's story because many social workers think, oh, I did the history of social work on my course. Yeah, I did the history of social work. Very often what we study is not the history of social work, it's the history of social welfare. We learn the stuff about the poor law, we learn about hospital almoners. That's not necessarily the history of social work. And Irina's story is fascinating. It's the birth of modern day social work. And it's a really interesting one to take a look at. So let's celebrate those social workers that are inspirational and that we can learn from. And let's change that narrative that everyone can name a famous social, uh, famous nurse and only half of us can name a famous social worker. And when you break that down, it's all about academics and people who write about social work as opposed to people who do social work. So we've looked at the what and the why and we've started to look at the who. But what about how should we celebrate to make sure that we don't move into that superhero narrative? How should we celebrate? Well, events like this are good for celebrating. We should share the joy regularly. Um, and share is a model for social work that we're going to be looking at in the future. We need to laugh. We need to have some humour. We need to highlight the fun. There's a lot of fun in what we do. There's a lot of joy in social work. And a lot of people focus on the negatives of social work. But do you know... Social work has been my passion for 35 years, four years training, 31 years in practice. And I still find something new and fascinating every day about our profession. We should use celebration jars. And that's kind of links back as well a little bit to Irina Sendler. So this is my celebrate. Well, this is the Social Work Connect team's celebration jar. In here, we've got all kinds of celebrations that the team have shared. So we're celebrating, um, for example, Kelly being approved at Fostering Panel. We're celebrating Ngozi's birthday. We're celebrating Dave's um, poem. We're celebrating all kinds of like costumes. Uh, well, lots of people's including Kultumas celebration, I've got to tell you is about some fabulous assignment marks that the team have been getting recently. So you absolutely, if you are a student, really do want to come along to the assignment writing webinar that the team are going to lead on in a couple of weeks time because the assignment marks they've been getting that are going in that celebration jar have been amazing. Have a jar, put in something about something that's gone well at work or something that you want to celebrate, collect them. And when you're feeling a bit low, get them out, take a look at them. A celebration jar individually can be brilliant. A team one's also great. Recognise that every journey begins with a single step and celebrate the small stuff too. I think Kultuma said earlier we need to help people celebrate the small stuff. Don't just wait to celebrate the big stuff. Accept positive feedback. We're not very good at that, you know, as social workers. We're really not. We, we do ourselves down a lot. Accept positive feedback. Self-care, vital, really important. Be kind to yourself. Don't always look at what didn't work. Be kind to yourself and use World Social Work Day to take us on a celebration. Um, I've got a picture here of Kelly's jar 
Kelly has her own jar because when I said oh, we should use celebration jars, Kelly said, oh, well, we've got I've got a jar and sent a photo. So jars can be useful like that to help us to be happy, as Kelly's said, or to help us to celebrate. World Social Work Day is next week. This year's theme is Ubuntu. Now, a lot of people will say to you that Ubuntu is um, a concept of I am because we are. And it is, but it's actually also a lot deeper than that. It goes a lot further than that. And over the weekend, I'm hoping to put onto my YouTube channel a video about what Ubuntu is all about and what it really means that goes into a bit more depth. I am because we are is definitely a part of Ubuntu, but I think it's a surface part of Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a concept, a whole concept, a whole philosophy from Africa that we really need to embrace, I think. And um, I absolutely love this quote from Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who says, I've often said that the idea and practice of Ubuntu is one of Africa's greatest gifts to the world, a gift with which, unfortunately, not many in the world are familiar. Ubuntu is a concept that in my community is one of the most fundamental aspects of living lives of courage, compassion and connection. Now, I don't know if you see the same thing that I see there. We all see Ubuntu in a different way. And I really like the way that Ubuntu is described there. But the thing that I see a lot in that final paragraph, the second paragraph of that quotation is words beginning with the letter C. And we started off by talking about celebrating. Celebrating begins with the letter C. And so I want to conclude the session by looking at the way in which COVID or if we want to call it coronavirus has led to change, challenges and a crisis impacting on the communities we serve. We've needed to draw on compassion. We've needed to be courageous. We've considered the contemporary context and we've been creative within often very difficult organisational cultures. We've cherished our connections and we've developed camaraderie over the period of time. We're often, as social workers, I think, described as the Cinderella service, but we need to give credit where it's due. And from my perspective, I wish that I could convey the contribution that every one of you has made to social work during this global pandemic. So it's important that we do celebrate and that we celebrate World Social Work Day, a single day in our professional calendar. So I thought I'd add in cake, chocolate and caffeine for anybody. I mean, it's an evening. So if you want to, a bit of Chardonnay will be fine as well. You know, you can add in anything you want to. But all those beginning with the letter C. So thinking about Ubuntu, then often this... Um, it's, it's hard to attribute, it's seen as an unknown um, poem is often used. If I am I because you are you, and you are you because I am I, then I am not I, and you are not you. That's all about the fact that we are we. We are only who we are because of the other people that we're with. And um, these webinars are only what they are because we do these as a team. We do these together. So we are we. And that's really important in social work. We need to move away from we are social workers, you are service users. We need to move away from othering. And that is what Ubuntu is all about. So happy World Social Work Day for Tuesday. Thank you for everything that you do. And Let's continue to celebrate social work through this week and on into next week. I hope that you have enjoyed our celebrations tonight. I don't know if there's anything in the chat, Diana, that we need to cover before we conclude for the evening. Or I don't know if Kelly's getting the music ready to play us out with as well. But is there anything in the chat, Diana? Um, no, it, well, really everyone's just saying how amazing it is to have you back and how this was super inspirational and that 
we need to be learning more about the different people within our profession that are actually doing amazing things. Um, and a lot of people were thankful for the fact that you, you made us aware of it. I think that is really important. You know, there's a phrase that, that she used, isn't there? If, if I can see further ahead, it's because I stand on the shoulders of giants. And it's that bit about knowing um, who our role models are, who we can look to. Because in times of crisis, you could look to, you know, well, what would Irina do in this situation? What would this person? I think it's really important for us all to have role models and so to to know the stories of social workers is important and to share our own stories and our own ideas about social work I think is really important sharing is the key aspect of celebrating isn't it that bit about coming together are there any questions Chris in the q and I can't see questions no questions okay so next couple of weeks sessions then let's take a look at what we've got coming up next week we are looking at international social work the team have pulled together a panel of uh, social workers from around the world and we're going to be looking at how can we move us you know just understanding the international context that global context be uh, useful for those of you who are students in England PCF domain one and domain nine are both all about the global context of social work on the 24th of March, we've got Debbie Greaves coming back to do sharenting by popular demand. If you remember, Debbie talked to us about use of um, social media. She's going to talk about sharenting. And I think actually what we should be doing is getting not just social workers coming to that, but all our friends coming to that as well, because I've noticed sharenting stuff going on so much on social media and the dangers of that. I think we're going to be looking at. And then the 31st of March, those of you who are students really do honestly want to come to the assignment writing webinar where the team are going to give you their top tips for writing assignments. So thank you very much. I think the team are putting into the chat now all the links. So it's been fabulous to be back. Great to see uh, all of the team and to know that all of you are there. And uh, so good night and see you next week.